Was it Chris Savage? No. Alright, who are you guys here to see? J. J. Michael Tatum! Well, I have a surprise for you. I think he's right over here. <laughs> Oh, he's so sexy. Calm down, all of you. <laughs> it's too early in the afternoon. It's too early in the afternoon. <laughs> I wish I did. God, there's a lot of you. Hi, everyone. Oh, Hi. 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 Hi, standers. <laughs> everyone, a round of applause to the floor sitters and the standers. Thank you. Thank you. You're troopers, and we all love you. So how's everyone doing today? Good. Sorry, let me ask that again. How's everyone doing today? Good! Okay, okay, now I believe you. Uh, so, hello, welcome to my Q&A. How many people have been to a Q&A of mine before? Oh, a lot of you. Why? 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 Are you here to fact check me? Yes. Because the stories do change a lot. Details, names, places, all that stuff do get changed to protect the innocent. Um, so, awesome, awesome. So, for those of you that are new, uh, to this. This is my second time here uh, at this lovely convention, Holiday Month 3, which I'm really enjoying. And yeah, how many people here are repeat offenders? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it. How's the rest of you were noobs? Like, you've never done this before. Now, anyone here who this is their first convention ever? Woo! Ah, quite a few of you. Awesome. Okay, I want all of you that just raise your hands to stand up very quickly. If you don't want to go, just stand up. <laughs> now, all of you kind of turn around and look at each other, okay? You all are like family now. I want all of you to be best friends by the time this convention is over. Can the rest of you make sure that happens, please? Yes. All right, awesome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to the con life. And to all of you, welcome to the con life. Q&A, 101, whatever we want to call it. This is J. Michael Payton makes a complete jackass of himself <laughs> in front of complete strangers. Okay. Ooh, ooh, wearing glasses, which makes me feel very much at home. <laughs> So this is how this works. Before we get started, let me uh, lay down a few ground rules. Uh, rule number one, if you have seen me answer the question you're about to I ask at another panel or on YouTube, if you've sought me on YouTube, you know who you are. <laughs> many, many, many videos of me on YouTube doing these, this, this very thing. So if you've seen me answer that question before, I promise you the answer's not going to change. Um, so, so ask something new. I like new questions. I like random. I do like random, and I will answer just about everything. Not necessarily truthfully. You won't know, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is off limits so long as it's relatively family friendly. To that point, also, I do occasionally let the odd curse word fly. I don't mean to. I do, but I do apologize for any sensitive ears out there that hear me like drop an F bomb or something like that and go, oh. If you're a child, you're about to grow up very quick. <laughs> That. Uh, you'll notice there's not a lot of wiggle room in this space, so I'm staying up here, and let's keep you people nice and, and mobile down there, so you can we can all relax and enjoy it. So please don't ask me to come and hug you, or pick you up, or throw you, or whatever. <laughs> throw you. Don't ask me to call your best friends, cousins, roommates, former hairdressers, dog walker, and marry them in Sebastian's voice. Please. <laughs> Another pulse panel, like like me being on the phone with someone while they're like, "Who are you?" Hang on. Um, so let's not do that. Uh, what else, what else? I'm not gonna wear things. <laughs> so don't hand me rabbit ears, that's over. Those days are over. God, you agree to wear a cowboy hat and rabbit ears at one convention and suddenly I leave every Q&A looking like a homeless person. <laughs> wrapped in like five layers of things that don't belong to me. That's gotta stop, that's gotta stop. So please, it's not even that cold outside. I'm well dressed now, let's not, let's not mar the ensemble. It was a lot to put together. <laughs> I have no idea what a struggle it is for me in front of my mirror going, am I ready? No, I don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, so, there's that rule, that rule, that rule, that rule. Oh yes, no autographs and things like that because we're doing that afterwards and they'll, they'll talk with all you lovely people about how that's going to work after I'm done chatting for, for however long that I'm chatting. Um, you're going to keep me posted as to how, how much time I have because I will just go on and on and on and on. Yep. Yep. You have to like throw little paper airplanes at me to get my attention. <laughs> 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 Nice. I love this man. Everyone give him a round. I have this thing where oh can we show them what we do? Okay, please. This is my thing. When I get upset, I'm like, oh, oh my god, this is oh, I can't work like this. Jared Hole. Huh? <laughs> 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 
At least he picks up after himself. I do, I instantly feel bad. Okay, so uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll have a show of hands, uh, and then I'll just kind of pick you at random. Please do not feel offended if I don't pick you, if you hold your hand up. I, d I don't advise holding your hand up the entire panel, because I may not actually pick on you, and you'll be mad at me because your arm will be asleep. <laughs> Please, if I don't pick on you, just know that it's completely random. It's not that I don't love you, I just didn't answer your stupid question. So, how about... <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> So, so uh, who has a question? We'll go with you first because you look like you're about to explode out of your chair. <laughs> like you're about to take off and go through the ceiling, which I'd actually like to see, but don't hurt yourself. Um, I heard you're a big Doctor Who fan. Hey. No, I guess I'm. Is <laughs> I? Yeah, no, I'm a huge Whovian. How many Whovians? <laughs> I mean, you can tell because they're so British and civilized. <laughs> Some conventions you say that and they just lose their shit. <laughs> like there's table flipping, Doctor! Ah! <laughs> and, they're like, and they're like, who's your favorite doctor? And they all say ten, and I'm like, no. Nine. Uh, ooh, who's at nine? Interesting four. choice. Ooh, four? Of course. He was my first doctor. My, my favorite is two. The second doctor. I, all of them are my favorites. I mean, it's hard to pick because they're all the doctor, right? I mean, all of them are really, really good, but like two is my personal favorite because without uh, the wonderful Patrick Troughton, uh, who had, was the first actor to have to convince an entire generation of Doctor Who fans that different actors could take up the mantle of that character and make it work, we wouldn't be talking about Doctor Who now. So the late, great Patrick Troughton, who, by the way, he was so into the character that well into his old age actually still dressed up as the doctor and went to conventions. He actually Aww. passed away at a convention in the 80s. Um, I mean, oh, but how awesome is that? I want to die at a convention. <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? He was like we'll so into it, it that he still did that. Still, like, and I, I actually was at a convention a few years ago and I met a gentleman who was in Patrick Trout, my favorite doctor's last autograph line. I was like, oh. <laughs> So you had a question, I'm sorry, and I completely rambled. See what happens? <laughs> Doctor that's coming out right now. I'm excited. I'm always excited when a new Doctor is happening because I'm like, I'm never disappointed. I'm never, I've been watching the show so long uh, that I, it, my, I can remember the first few times I had to get used to a new actor playing the role. I was always like, oh, well, you're no Tom Baker. <laughs> and it was, well, you're no Peter Davison. <laughs> um, and then, but, but it was really, you know, you, you come to embrace the fact that a show that's 50 years old um, is, can only be 50 years old because <laughs> the lead actor changes very quickly. Um, the first three people that played the guy are dead, so, you know. Um, I mean, it, so the show becomes about, and like, it is about frequent, violent upheaval and change, and so I get excited. Like, I will cry my eyes out when Matt Smith leaves because I absolutely adore and worship his performance. But it's time to go, you know, it's time to go. When you guys, part of, part of the appeal of the show is I know I'm gonna cry before long because that actor's gonna kind of regenerate. But I, I like Peter Capaldi, I think he's really interesting. I love that they're getting older and quirkier um, because we've gone young for a while and I'm like pretty sure we're gonna have like Justin Bieber play the Doctor and that should never happen. So I wanna go older, I wanna go older and kind of quirkier like, like in the old days, you know, I mean, it was really cool. So I'm, I'm very excited, I'm very excited and I'm very, Nervous. I'm always like, oh, it's like a blind date. <laughs> and you just hope your friends know you well enough not to set you up with someone you're going to hate. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, we open with a Doctor Who question. Uh, Okabe, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, imposter. What's your uh, You wrote the script for Steins Gate, correct? Right? Along with Patrick Seitz, yes. Uh, most of you probably know Patrick Seitz as Germany. Uh, well, I, I do know Japanese, just enough to get into some really deep shiz. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I see, I caught that one again, too. Good. Um, I know enough Japanese to get in trouble. Like, I can, I can ask where the bathroom is in Japan and, like, order food and, like, you know, be mindful of, of the, you know, the keigo. And, like, oh, crap, how do I... I'm uh, not allowed to pass in front of this person because they're... I'm inferior, but um, but I'm not I'm not like an expert on Japanese cultural references things like that. I'm by no means do I have a master's degree in the language. So uh, there is a team of translators um, that that work on the show from a standpoint of someone who's watching it, almost like an anthropologist would watch you know or read a, a poem or something and then translate it for someone in whose language it is not originally written. And so then I and Patrick uh, get the translations, the straight translations, which are essentially, they're, they're, not, they're not artful in any sense, they are literal translations, they are as close to English, uh, close to the original Japanese as you can get in English, uh, and then our job is to make it sound pretty, or to adapt it so that it sounds like it has a home in, in English, and you'd be surprised how difficult 
that can be, because I think there are no two languages in the world more different than Japanese and English, just in terms of not only, not only the language itself and the grammar and the syntax, which are unique in both cases. English is a big, fat, snowballing bastard, and everyone who tries to learn it is like, this, is, this makes no sense. Like, numbers, trying to teach people to count in English is ridiculous. I'm like, okay, well, so it's one through nine, and then when you get to 10, and, and through that it's 10, 11, 12, and then teens, what the hell, why, the, why? Like, it makes no sense to people learning it. So English is like, it's a, you know, but, but my point is English and Japanese have both aesthetically, both of them for many hundreds of years have now matured into very different and distinct wealths of figuration and poetic license. And so something that, that connotates in, in Jap to the Japanese mind does not carry over, like the literal translation might, but you miss the subtext unless you are a native speaker or have even studied it, you know, or something like that. So uh, one of my favorite examples is, because uh, it's a very light one, but daikon, daikon, which is a kind of radish, is frequently used in Japanese culture. It's a great pun uh, that essentially means, uh, the, the, closest, the closest equivalent in English is to call someone a ham actor, or to, that they're overdone. But there's nothing different, I mean, like when on screen, for example, this happened in Oran, which I also work on the adaptations with Monica Real uh, on, and, and uh, there's a moment where they call Haruhi a daikon radish. And the Japanese, and of course the animation supports this, and now suddenly here she is looking like a daikon radish with a face, and she's like, oh, oh. and it's hilarious. Well, how the hell do you translate that? Because the animation is working against you. Like, daikon is not gonna hit the English ear the way ham would, because we get that. We all of us know, oh, he's such a ham, or she's such a ham, but we can't, oh, he's such a radish. <laughs> English because that just didn't happen, you know. Um, there's an example of two languages that have just, you know, grown into their own little traditions very differently. So it's a challenge. And with, with uh, Steins Gate, there are so many references to Japanese otaku culture, which I adore and I uh, hope to thrive. My boyfriend actually currently lives in Akihabara, which is a very real place. You know the stairwell where all that stuff happens? He hangs out there. Like, Jesus. <laughs> but, um, so, where was I going with this? So it, it was really fun. So we decided, though, instead of you know uh, throwing out all these references that uh, in the English that wouldn't make sense because it's supposed to be in English. I mean, there are, there are instances, for example, not only the references but uh, to otaku culture, but there are instances where like what they're reading is supposed to be in Japanese, and they suddenly switch to English within French, and we're like, well, how the hell are we going to do that? Because they're supposed to be speaking English from the beginning in the dub, and you don't want people to say, well, wait a minute, that's well, why are they suddenly okay? I can't read this. You read this. And so we're like, well, we can't have people think that Okabe is illiterate. So we, we had it be French or something, and we decided to make uh, to take the opportunity to take the humor and uh, instead of you know using all the otaku references, which are really really funny in the Japanese, but that just wouldn't hit an English ear that well. Uh, we thought we decided well we do something similar. We make our own nerd references, our Western nerd references. So there's a lot of Doctor Who references, there's a lot of Star Trek references and comic book references. I mean, just out the wazoo. And it was really 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 fun to do because we thought it worked. And, uh, when it comes to adapting, our, our, especially when it's humor, like, like in much of the, the humor in Steins Gate, our philosophy is that when it comes, if the original line in the Japanese, you know, if it's supposed to you know, be funny, for example, the sub is there to tell you what's being said uh, exactly as it can in Japanese. The dub should make you laugh. So that's, that's what we focused on. And I think we did a great job. I mean, Patrick is amazing to work with, and he's one of my all-time favorite uh, uh, writing partners because he is absolutely sublime as a writer and some of the stuff he pulled out of his magic hat of ideas was wonderful and ran with all of them and that was, oh my god, that show, I'm going to start crying. Sorry. Uh, let's see, reindeer. <laughs> uh, you're simply one hell of a deer. Is that yes? <laughs> yeah, I pay attention to my shows. <laughs> um, how do you adjust to playing such... So playing such versatile characters, like... How do I adjust? Mm -hmm. Well, darling, I don't adjust at all. I'm psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. I think, um, I get asked a lot, like, who my favorite characters are, and I think yep. I explained at some point yesterday, and now there's certainly other cons, and it's hard to pick favorites because all the characters I've played, uh, because there's so many of them are so distinct, they become kind of a permanent feature in your psyche. They just lodge there permanently. It's like a big, long Thanksgiving Day table where all of them are sitting like family and screaming at each other. <laughs> Past the, the radishes, <laughs> and and, uh, <laughs> and so it's weird. So like picking a favorite is impossible because if I pick a favorite, then like I go to my hotel room later tonight and there's like 18 characters all standing around me going, "You're a bastard." <laughs> Why did you pick me? I didn't think of you. Why didn't you think of me? Ah! 
<laughs> so it's really weird. I have no personality myself. I have none. I'm just like this empty vessel. So that's why I like acting because then I can borrow other personalities to get by. <laughs> it's very fruitful, I find. It's great. I'm actually, this is a true story, I'm actually a very, very shy person and I have very little like a social life to shut up. Um, <laughs> he's looking at me like, yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> But no, so, so acting, that's kind of the appeal of acting, is that, you know, I'm not a very well-adjusted human being, so, so I don't have to be. I can just play one on TV. <laughs> well, I rarely do. What's so interesting? Is, I think being well-adjusted is overrated. I don't want to be, I don't want to be well-adjusted. I want to be adaptable, but I don't want to be well-adjusted. I think well-adjusted to my ear means stagnation. As things slow down and there's something like normalcy in your life. And normalcy is boring! <laughs> yep. To me. I don't know if you people agree. You seem like a normal bunch. <laughs> 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 How you, like, come to the hotel after, like, stick around after the con is over and you look at all, like, the business suits with their little, with their briefcases and, like, there's no cosplayers left and, like, well, everything's different. That's like the circus has left town. Is really, like, <laughs> yeah. and, like, flyers floating in the wind and, like, the smell of elephant dung. You're like, oh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I see a yellow Pikachu hat thing here. You could be one of the characters you want to be in person. Who do I want to be in person? Oh, meet in person. Oh, oh, well that changes everything. <laughs> Let's see, I think, oh, uh, you know what? Actually, it's the same answer for both the questions, the one that I misheard and the one that you actually said. Uh, Isaac Dean from Bacchino. Um, because he's the kind of character that's just impossible not to fall in love with. I mean, he's so romantic. I mean, but not in that cheesy way. He's romantic in the sense that he's like, let's go do something crazy, and let's just, because that's, why not? I mean, there is no such thing as normal. Normal, uh, you know, uh, strange is normal to him. And he's an absolute idiot, but not really. He just, you know, he just it's, it's all a facade. But I love Isaac Diem, my God. I want to be Isaac Diem when I grow up. <laughs> not because he lives forever, but, you know. <laughs> a nice perk. Uh, but uh, you in the back with another a little hat here, like a navy thing. Yes, you, yes, yes, you just, and you stand up, you're wearing a Zelda shirt. Um, first of all, this is a bit of a spoiler for anybody who's seen the day of the doctor, and Adam. Everyone cover your ears again, see the day of the doctor. Everyone ready? Okay. Okay. Okay, go for it. Gallifrey, it's bad. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. I think the doctor now has. I like that, you know, the doctor now has to you know, confront his past, which has always been, which has always been hovering in the background. I mean, like, the fact that it's changed and now he's got to find home again, which is ultimately the goal of any adventurer, even one as well-versed in adventure as the Doctor, you know, who's been at this for now for close to a millennia. I think it's fascinating that now they're gonna go that direction. I love it, I think the possibilities are well-nigh endless, and I love the fact that I now feel, it now will go back to feeling the way it did when I was growing up watching the show when he was a man alone, but Gallifrey was still around, and the Time Lords frequently intervened and interfered, and occasionally he'd show up, and he was the president of Gallifrey for a very short amount of time, if you recall, and so, like, he, the, the fact that Gallifrey is back makes me very, very happy. Okay, you can all take your fingers out of your ears now. <laughs> How many of you actually didn't do that? And you're like, oh, now I can't watch the show. Watch it anyway because there's a lot of surprises. Oh my god, the one in the museum? Oh. I guess, I guess you could say it was like a great curator. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and I cry, 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 cry. There's a really, incidentally, at the same time, uh, they came out with a movie. Uh, about the filming of the first series with um, Hartnell in the early days, and it's called Adventures in Space and Time, and it's brilliant. Sorry, uh, excuse me, Adventures in, in Time and Space, thank you. Um, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a movie about, you know, the making of, but it's really well done, and it's heartbreakingly good. I suggest you go and watch it, because that, to me, that and The Day of the Doctor are together, I consider the 50th anniversary special. Uh, let's see this side of the room, let's see. Oh, uh, Ranger Girl, winner of, of the Kamehameha contest, by the way. She did, she kicked ass. You won a Kamehameha contest and you're like, oh, hi, I'm just wearing a shower. Don't be shy, scream it out, I know you got it in you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's such an attractively framed question, like the way you put it, like, are you in journalism or something? Is that your goal? Because you're like, I have, I feel like, I feel like I'm on 2020 right now. <laughs> like, it's 
this idea. I was just a really good way of putting that question. Thank you. Um, it's kind of a long story, but I found acting, and there wasn't necessarily an end goal when I found it. I was very, very young. And how I found it essentially was because when I was very little, I didn't speak until I was almost 10 years old um, because of a debilitating speech impediment. I know I've been making up for lost time ever since. I know. <laughs> um, God knows. But uh, I had. <laughs> Shut up, Jared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he's, I love him, I just have to bust his chops, because that's, that's, hold my water bottle. <laughs> um, no, so I, I didn't speak a lot when I was a child, uh, at all really, until I was about 10 years old, but uh, when I took speech therapy for, you know, finally, uh, when it finally began to take hold, um, the, the lovely little old British woman, whose name was actually Mrs. Britt, I kid you not, who <laughs> uh, was like a thousand years old and had like a huge gray bun of hair that accounted for like a full foot of her height. And it was just a very frightening and charming little British woman in the way that only frightening and charming little British women can be. And um, she had ties to the stage and musical theater and all that stuff, and we found that if I was reciting something like a poem or, or you know, Shakespeare, God knows what else, and all of which I can still recite in many, many hundreds of poems from memory by the yard, because that's just how I learn to talk. Um, if I had a script to read from or something I could memorize going into my conversation, they stutter tended to disappear completely. And so she thought, well, we need to get you on the stage because I think that's where you're running now. So I, again, like I said earlier, not having much of a core personality or at least being a very shy person, I was drawn to the stage because I could be someone else. And if I could be someone else, I could speak. And so it uh, made me fall in love with acting, but it never was something I wanted to do as a career. I mean, I spent most of my childhood on the stage. But when the time came to decide what I wanted to do for a living, you know, when you have to, when you reach that crossroads, uh, that uh, crossroads rather in high school, and had to, you know, decide what you wanted to go to school for, um, I chose a completely different path. I actually wanted to be a recital pianist, and so I went to the conservatory and dropped out after a semester and a half. I uh, you know, you know, don't follow my example. Um, and I just, I gave, I thought acting is far too difficult to make a living at because it takes a very courageous person to do that, and I'm not fundamentally a very courageous person, so I had a whole other career. Uh, like I said, dropped out, the music didn't pan out, and then I was like in marketing for almost a decade. And then it just so happened that acting found me again, and I forgot how much I loved it, how much it meant to me, but for the first time, um, I mean, the, the, the shortest version of the story is that Christopher Bevins, who works for Funimation, and who was a good friend of mine at the time, uh, still is, incidentally, but I mean, he was a friend of mine before I, before the acting started, several years, we were comic book nerds together. So, you know, he crashed on my couch many a night with my cat on his face. We <laughs> 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 were buds. And then he just kind of called me up one day and said, hey, I'm, I'm working on a show called Samurai 7, which happens to be based on one of my personal favorite films by Akira Kurosawa, so it's Samurai. And, uh, you know, he's like, I, there's just a, this is one part in there that's re pretty substantial, you know, but I, I just can't, none of the usual suspects are working. I'd love to try you out. I know you have an acting background. What would you think about coming in and reading for me? And I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. You're so sweet. Hell no. Because <laughs> I was terrified. I was really terrified. I hadn't acted in so long. And I thought, well, my experience is stage. It's a very different kind of acting than, than on mic stuff, which I had no experience with. So I thought it's going to be a waste of your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for that. And fortunately for me, he, he's not the sort of man to take no for an answer. He's very Tony Soprano about that. <laughs> so he called me the next day and proceeded to have the same conversation as though we hadn't had it the day before. <laughs> so we're on the show, and I have this part of you in mind. I'm like, I, did, did I dream it? No, I, I love you, but no. And this went on for like two weeks, and, and as it went on, it got scarier and scarier and scarier. Whereas he'd start with, hey, I've got this show, I didn't know, but if you don't come, I'm going to break it for me, guys. <laughs> he'd have done it, too. Like, he's, he's a scary SOB. So, and all the while, you have to, in my mind, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm oscillating between absolute terror and not wanting to do it, and the sense of, wow, man, I did enjoy acting so much, maybe I should just, oh, you know what, I'll go in. So I finally agreed to come in under protest and record uh, this audition for him which took four hours. I had no idea how long it would take. I just got in the, into the box and the booth, a little, little thing looked kind of like a TARDIS, only it is actually smaller on the inside. <laughs> and uh, we recorded, it was very intense. We were actually matching animation, and we're playing with the voice, and I'm, reading how to, I'm learning how to read a dub script, which is a very different creature than, uh, say, a playbook or, or uh, even a, a, a TV script or something like that. And um, 
And it was four hours, four hours. That's a very intense audition, especially when you're used to doing stage when it's like you've got maybe 10 minutes to do a monologue and then out comes the shepherd hook and you'll never hear from these people again. <laughs> and after four hours, I've been sweating bullets and convinced that I've sucked and that you will now leave me alone for good. But a little heartbroken because I thought, oh, this doesn't think it'd be really fun to do. But no, 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 I have a life. I'm an adult, which means I'm unhappy and I'm paying my bills. <laughs> I have, I am a responsible adult. <laughs> so I walked out of the booth and he was like, you know, okay, we'll sign these, which uh, I thought were non-disclosure agreements for seeing animation that's not been released yet. My first mistake, I didn't really look closely at them. And I signed them and I said glibly to him, like, how do you people get anything done if it takes you four hours to audition every single person? I couldn't conceive of how they, how they worked. And he's like, oh, honey, it doesn't, it took us five minutes. We've actually just recorded the first six episodes and you just signed a contract. So be back here next Sunday. <laughs> And suddenly I was an actor again, and we, you know, we spent eight months on that show, and then slowly but surely uh, I started getting more work up there, and then I got the chance to adaptive write, um, uh, because Eric Bale happened to be in a show with me, and he liked some of the stuff I was coming up with on the fly, and uh, then I just, it was great. So one thing led to another, and I was able to quit the job I was very unhappy in. Uh, and uh, move on, and now I do this, and I get to come to conventions and spend time with you other people who are pretty, pretty awesome. In the very back of the room, I see, like, the Mystery Science Theater robot thing. That's, that's amazing. I, I love, I love the hell out of that. Um, do you have a question? Yeah. What do you think of the best film of 2013? Best film of 2013? I haven't seen a lot of them, to be perfectly honest. Um, I don't know, the first like three minutes of Thor Dark World because we get to see Chris Hemsworth shirtless. But I don't know. <laughs> oh, you mean like Academy Award like level stuff? Okay, never mind. Uh, na, 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 na. God, what have I seen? What have I seen? I don't go out to movies so often uh, anymore, so it's really weird. I'm trying to think of even what I've seen. I'm like. Oh, actually, okay, my, my, it's probably not the best movie in the world, but I mean, maybe it is, I don't know, but I really, really, really love Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes. I, I love Timothy Cumberbatch. Uh, and, yes, I do, absolutely, I'm a Cumberbitch. That's the Cumberbitch. Oh, got 10 minutes? Oh, my God, only 10 minutes? Okay, let's do lightning round. Uh, so very quick, you, Santa Hat, and stuff. Um, if you one day woke up and then you were all of a sudden in Sebastian's place and yelled for uh. him, how would you react? If I looked like Sebastian, I would never leave the house. Were there any shows that you auditioned for but you never got the part for? Like you really wanted to? Oh God, all the time. I'm an actor. That's like the name of the game. Duh. It's like, that's, I think acting is like 500 no's followed for every one yes. So yeah, yep. there's, always, there's tons of shows I've auditioned like, for. Like, oh, I'll never tell you because the people that wound up getting that role were dear friends of mine. And so I'll be like, oh, well, guess what? I could play that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it actually, the thing is, I mean, I, you learn to deal with the rejection because yeah. I, I'm drawn to acting because of the characters. And if I, if I don't get to play them, I know whoever's going to play them is going to do them justice. And at the end of the day, as long as the character is served, whether it's me or Ian or whoever, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Maybe my bank account isn't as happy, but <laughs> Uh, let's see. You, the glasses and the orange sleeve. I see blue. Yes, you. Uh, do you ever cosplay with your character? Uh, no, but I'm considering changing that very soon. Bastion, she got she got True story, I'm going to say this just to try to finagle my, my boyfriend into this. My boyfriend and I have the exact same, like, height weight ratio to one another that uh, CL and Sebastian. Oh, oh my god! god. Yes. 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 yes! 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 He's got the hair. He's got the hair. Yes! So, yeah, yes. We're totally do that one day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're perfectly normal human beings. Uh, the other one on jacket there. You're one of the twins. Are you Hikaru? I'm Ah, see, I got it. I got it. I'm really good with this. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Can you say a line Sebastian? Uh, I can, but that's not how you talk to Sebastian. You have to order me to do it. You know how this works. You know this show. Say Sebastian, I order you to dance like a monkey or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you three will want to cover your ears. <laughs> no, really. Okay, don't believe me. I will never get sick of doing this. And after all, I'm simply one hell of a bump there. <laughs> oh my god. I'm very proud of you. That was a 
an enormously tame response. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, on the side of the room, you I'm so tired of uh, I know. Tell me some a kiss. Just announced. How do you like it so far? If you've even finished any of it. Oh, we're done. Oh, you're done. We finished things long before they released. Yeah, we finished that months, months, months ago. I enjoyed it. I had a ball. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. I so, like uh, you, uh, so I'm Saluna. I'm a very hardcore Tom and Peacock player. So if you could say, what is it now, Daddy, as Kyria. <laughs> Again, the wrong way to address Kyria. You have to give me money. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, like one of my favorite lines in all the world is, is, is him going, well, what is it now, daddy? Purple sweater. I love how you look like, what am I wearing? Yep, that's me. <laughs> Complicated. I, I think how do he? I, I honestly, I mean, I would. Of, of, if those are her choices, it would be Tomaki definitely because they're made for each other. Like they balance each other. Violently? Violently? Well, if, if Tomaki was violently killed, let's face it, I don't think Haruhi would be like well, next. <laughs> their grief in their own ways. Uh, I don't know. Not Kyoya though. Kyoya's not at the girls. No, sorry. Shocking, really? Go back and watch the show. <laughs> my favorite pairing. Five minutes? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, my favorite pairing in the show is not a pairing at all. It's Kyoya and the twins. Uh, <laughs> the twins are like crazy like Tamaki, but they're smart. Oh. Tamaki's not smart. He's brilliant. He's wonderful, but he's not smart. <laughs> Not a lot. I mean, there's a mad tea party going on upstairs, but I don't do that. Um, let's see, I see, uh, is there, is that, uh, I see a red glove. Yes. Jack. Oh, Jack, hello, now I can see your face. Hello. What's your favorite part of playing Sebastian? My favorite part? The voice. The voice, absolutely. I have a British accent, and a true story, I was in a, I was at a convention a couple of, about a year or so ago in Oklahoma, and I stayed for a couple of days afterwards to stay with friends, and the hotel went back to that place we call Mama that we all hate. And, uh, but I wasn't done being on, so I was doing Sebastian's voice all day, and when I went to like the concierge desk, and was like just trying to make conversation with the masking man, like where a good restaurant was, and within walking distance, blah, 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 blah. I was like, hello, I wonder if you might help me. I'm trying to find a good place to get a good uh, bone pasta or something, and the girl just goes, uh-uh, stop that. What's that coming out of your mouth? <laughs> Along with it, it was like, oh, I'm sorry, is it difficult to understand? I'm just as strange people. She's like, no, uh uh, no, no. <laughs> Deborah, Deborah, come here, Deborah, Deborah. <laughs> Say something. And I'm like, oh, hello, Deborah, how are you? <laughs> no, see, see, no. If you were my boyfriend and you talked like that to anybody else, I would kick your ass. <laughs> happened in that voice, it's the English voice, the English, only the British can get away with saying half the things they've said for most of the time that they've ruled the world, which has been quite a while. It's like, what's the, what's the old Hadeezer joke where he's like, only the British can get away in that accent of saying something like, oh, hello, how are you? Oh, I love this hell, it's wonderful. Here's some shiny beads. Do you want these beads too? You take those. I'll take all this that. <laughs> um, all right, uh, let's see this in room. Uh, you with a duck. You have a duck in your hand. I love people with props. <laughs> props are a good way to get my attention. <laughs> and it's jerks. What do you think the France replaced the If France? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I think Seattle will learn how to fire a musket and kill him. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even want to think what that's like. Oh, it's like Blue Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Blue butler. It's my little doll. Oh. <laughs> shut up. Shut up, frog. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes, the uh, you two are the uh, second row. Can you have a quick conversation between Sebastian and France? Okay. A very quick one? Yes. Four. Oh my god, you're so sexy. Will you want to go work for me? No. <laughs> uh, I 
I see you with, with uh, is that what you in the like you've got like the thing, the sword and the thingy and the stuff. <laughs> What? They're all gonna hate you. <laughs> what? What? A line in Okabe's voice. A line in Okabe's voice. Ooh, I have an idea. You and you, the other Okabe. At the count of three, let's have an evil laugh off. Are you ready? Right? Right? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Jared, so we can tell you how this is going to work. Oh, he doesn't need it. Never mind. Oh, everyone pay attention. All right, guys. 